Okay, welcome back. And in part two, we're going to be looking at setting up some more paragraph styles. We're going to be looking at the uh, chapter uh, numbers and chapter titles. So one of the things I'd like to do actually before I build a, a paragraph style for this, I'd quite like to put the chapter one and then the eve of the war, the chapter, so the chapter number and then the chapter name all in one line. If that's what I want to do, now I do know if I scroll through this story, I'll just find another chapter. Can I find one? That one there. Yeah, there's one. You can see that they're on two different lines because they're two different individual paragraphs. So faced with this problem, how am I going to get the chapter title to go in the same line as a chapter number. So I have noticed this is a regular pattern throughout the document. So I'm going to work with that. that that's kind of quite useful to me. So I'm going to go to find and change. Remember find and change where we, we found a pattern and we worked with it. Well, we're going to do the similar thing here. So I'm going to get my find and change dialog box open, but I'm not going to use the text tab. I'm going to click on this thing called grep. And see if we can use grep to work out a way of grabbing this line of text, or this paragraph, and appending it to that one. Now what I actually need to do is find the chapter numbers, remove this carriage return, this end of paragraph, place it with a space, and when I do that it will bring this paragraph up in the same line, so it will append it, so it will become one paragraph. Not too difficult. I know what needs to be done. Um, so what we're going to do? Well, in grep, we're going to write an expression, a little bit of code, if you like, to to find this, and then find this end of paragraph, and then find this, and then remove that end of paragraph. Sounds complicated, but it's not too difficult. Now, the first thing we're going to find is is the chapter numbers. Now, the instant recognized pattern that these have is that they are all uppercase letters. They're all in capitals. This is really going to help me. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. And I'm going to say, find me some capital letters followed by this carriage return, this end of paragraph, followed by some capital letters. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to say find what, and I'm going to open a bracket because I want to put it in, in, in sets so it will find sets for me. So I'm going to say find what, we'll find an end of paragraph, uh, sorry that's my fault, sorry. Find, it's under wildcard, any uppercase letter and backslash u is any uppercase letter. Now I don't want to just find one if I just said find one, it'll only look for an instance where there is just one capital letter. So I'm going to say find one, and then I'm going to say find any uppercase letter. That's good. Okay, so now it's finding two. Well, I can't leave it at that because it's only going to find an instance of where there is just two. Well, I do know there's no number that's just one letter, so that's fine. But however, you know, I want to make sure this is going to cap get, kind of find all of these. So it's going to say find what? Find an uppercase letter, followed by an uppercase letter, but I want to say find two or more. And for that, I'm just going to put a plus sign in. So essentially, all that's doing is saying find an uppercase letter, followed by an uppercase letter or more. And I'm going to close my bracket. Okay, that's the first set. And I'm going to make my life a bit easier by just highlighting that and copying it. I've just done Command C, Control C on your PC. Once I've found that, you need to find the end of paragraph. So then find the end of paragraph, and then backslash R is your end of paragraph. And then I want to find another group of capital letters. Now there's no point me just putting find a capital letter because again, it's going to just find an instance where there's just one. So that's not going to help me. Also, you've got to be careful that it's not going to find something like this, this bunch of capital letters, followed by an end of paragraph followed by a capital letter. 
we don't want it finding this. So we have to repeat that, okay, to clear that problem. Cool. There we have it. That's our expression. But what we're going to change it to, good question. We're going to change to, well, we're just going to say, when you have found first set, just find it. And then we're going to replace the backslash R with a space. And I've just tapped the space bar once. And then when you have found the second set, just leave it. Okay, so ready to test it. Let's find, make sure this says document there. So let's say find next. Brilliant. It's found it. It's found the first one. Let's change it. Spot on. It's worked. So let's do a confident change all. 16. Sounds good to me. And okay. Cool. Now, click done. Quick scroll through that to see what's happened. See if I can find one. What was that? I wish I knew what page that other one was on. Oh, there's one, look. Chapter three, look, it's worked. So they're out now all on one line. Fantastic. I'm just gonna jump back to page one. Okay, so they're all on one line, it's worked. The next thing I need to do is I need to apply a style to this. So I'm just gonna click inside it. Now if I, I could apply my style up here in the control panel, not a problem, and then preserve it in my paragraph styles. So, but what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna be inside that paragraph. Okay, my paragraph styles, and I'm going to create a brand new style and apply the attributes directly to the style. Now, this is going to be my chapters, so I'm going to call it chapters. Makes sense. Now, you can see based on the body, it's based on the body copy because we applied that initially. It doesn't have to be, I can base it on any other style that I have in there. But I'm going to leave it on body copy because if I want to change the, the font in the future at some point, then I only need to change the body copy and that will then flow through to my chapters because it's going to be left on based on. Now I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to do a few things here. I'm just going to go to my basic character formats. I think I will just, I don't know, get that up a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe that's a bit big. I don't know. I'll leave it as it is for now. It might be a bit big. We can sort it out later on. Uh, I don't need to worry about the leading because it's all on one line. I'm going to go to indents and spacing and I think I'm going to centre it. I'm also going to give it some space after it and I'm going to be quite generous to be honest with you because it's, it's a book. That's looking good to me. I'm quite happy with that. And I think I'm going to leave it there for now. So, okay, now, next thing I need to do is I need to apply this style to all of my chapters. So I'm gonna to go to find and change. I don't want grep now, I'm gonna click back on text and in find what, I'm going to type the word chapter and I'm gonna change it to the word chapter. Essentially, all I'm doing here is finding the word chapter in caps. Um, so that's just going to target basically all the chapter titles. It's going to be really helpful. Now, that's done nothing at all. All it's going to do is change the word chapter with the word chapter. What I do want to do when it's found the word chapter, I want to apply a style. So I'm going to click on this little button down here. Make sure you select the paragraph styles and I'm going to click on there. And those are the styles I've set up so far. There's the one called chapters. Click on OK, click Find Next, it's found one. This already has the style on it, clearly, so changing it isn't going to do anything. Find Next, there's another one. Change, excellent. Change all, good. Now, let's change them all, let me just centre that. Now, I can see that even though it's changed them all, it's not fixed the problem about where these chapters are starting. Now, this is something that I can fix directly in my paragraph style. I'm just gonna click on my selection tool. Resolve this by going over to my paragraph style panel, 
and double click on the chapters. Now just make sure you've, you've hit escape and you've clicked on the pasteboard. Okay, tapping on the pasteboard means there's now nothing selected because you don't want to be for example in this paragraph by mistake and as soon as you click on the chapters guess what it's going to apply it to that paragraph so be careful we don't want that so escape click on the pasteboard nothing's now selected now all I need to do now is just edit the chapters paragraph style what I'd like to do is come down this panel on the left hand side and I'm going to click on this option here that says keep options so currently my paragraphs are starting anywhere because that actually is the default setting however on this occasion I would quite like to make my chapters start at the top of the next odd page so I need to change this from anywhere to on next odd page Great, and did you see that? It moved, it's jumped already across. When you're ready, click OK, and let's look at the changes. Look at that, fantastic. That seems to have worked, done the job. And there, and, and there, fantastic. So, looking good, very happy with that. And that's it, I think, so far for my paragraphs. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm just going to create myself, because at the moment, chapter one, the eve of the walk, is a bit odd, like that. So I'm going to create a character style and apply it to the, to the numbers, to the chapter numbers. So I'm going to go over to my, my panels on the right-hand side here and click on Character Style. And I'm going to just create a new one. I'm going to click on the Panel Menu, New Character Style. I'm going to call this one chapter numbers so I know what it is and now all I'm going to do in here actually is I'm just going to change the colour I'm going to change it to cyan but just make sure you've not selected the stroke fantastic now I could apply this this style this character this character style by for example selecting I mean, mega selection and then click on chapter numbers and then you will see that it's applied however it's a long job long manual job for me to go through the entire story I know there's only about 17 chapters but if there was 300 chapters you've got a bit of a problem or a long job so let me just undo that and find a quicker way of doing it now to make sure I've come out of here so I hit escape and click on the pasteboard and go to edit my chapter styles again very quickly just very quickly jump down to drop caps and nested styles. I'm going to apply a nested style, a style nesting inside another one. And with that there, you can see what's going on. Now, nested styles, here we are in the center panel here. There's nothing in there. Click new nested style button to create a new nested style. So here we do new nested style. So in here, in this drop down, it should be listed all the styles I've created in the character styles panel. So I've already created the one, so oh, there it is, chapter numbers. Simple. Now, all this is going to do here is say, ask me what you want to do with it. How far do you want to run this nested style? Well, I like to run it through. Click on that, you can get an option to say through or up to. I want to go through two words. I know I've only got two words um, in my chapters, chapter one, chapter two, all the way up to chapter 17. If there was three words like chapter 21, then I'd just set up a new paragraph style and apply that to, um, to run through three words. Simple. So if your preview is switched on, you should see at the top that it's now applied that colour to the first two words. Click OK when you're ready. OK, and again, a quick scroll through and just to confirm, there we go. Excellent. Now that looks much better. Okay, so that's your lot for part three. Um, come back for part four where we'll be looking at master pages and setting up a header and auto page numbering. So lots of other goodies to look forward to. See you then.